Today's episode is brought to you by the best store in the universe. Thousands of shirts, but not really. Shop now and support the show at MaddoxRules.com. Welcome to the best debate in the universe. Every debate in the universe from getting hyped to laying pipe. With over 4.5 million downloads, I'm your host, Maddox. With me is the rear admiral of Tangents, Ron Babcock. Thank you, Maddox. And returning moderator, Kirk Wilcox. Here I am, rock you like a hurricane. And special guest this week, TJ Peters. Love you, Maddox. Welcome back to the show. Guys, we have an exciting show this week. Our debate is, are fans entitled? That's the debate, and there's two ways you could interpret that. But I should introduce our guests, our returning guests this week, Kirk Wilcox and TJ Peters. Guys, welcome back to the show. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. We were talking before the show because I'm wearing... I'm wearing a, kind of a cool button shirt. It's got a lot of cactuses and uh, scorpions and stuff on it. And someone in the chat room says, Maddox looks like he's going to a tiki bar right after this. <laughs> <laughs> you do got that, uh, we were saying you get that kind of Daddix vibe. Yeah, yeah Daddix. Right, right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I, I, I have a friend. We have a mutual friend. As soon as he started dropping dad jokes, I knew it. That's like the male version of the biological clock. You know, as as women oh. usually usually get in their mid to late thirties, they're like, "Oh, I gotta have a kid." Well, people say I always have a lot of dad jokes, and I'm like, "No, I just I've always had dad jokes. I just got older." Right, right. You just caught up to your own dad jokes. Yeah, exactly. I've been like like fifty five since I've been like twenty two. Right. I think you know, I've always been that weird kind of older sensibility. Right. I live in that same space as well. I've been wearing uh, for many years now of a daily fanny pack. This is not. There's no sense of irony in it. It's so functional. And uh, when I'm at the grocery store or when I'm, you know, at Disneyland with the kids I don't have. Is that where you keep your penis? Uh, when I'm not using it, yes. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, son, where'd you find this? <laughs> what? Jesus, this deep cut. Wow, you've been waiting to use that. Yeah, I know. I haven't used it ever in context. I'm like, damn, that's a pretty sick burn there, Ron. Pretty good. I like it. Um, yeah, the, so you actually have a functional fanny pack. Yeah. Oh this my is God. why we have like, not this, is the fanny, the fanny this is the fanny pack. This is the fanny pack. So if you guys are watching wow. it up and I'm sitting. on YouTube, yeah, TJ's holding up a great, it's a it's a tasteful fanny pack. I was expecting some schlocky shit. I don't know That's why. That's what I'm saying. It's none of this zebra print hipster bullshit. This has a pocket for my wallet. There's phone. There's like a little back pocket. This little one, sometimes I put toothpicks in or change. You, you guys, never know when you're going to need change, kids. Um, and it works. Guys, it just I gotta, does the job. I got to say, for those who are not seeing this thing, it's the type of fanny pack where you look at it and you're like, there's probably some condoms in there. You know yeah. what I mean? Because guys who wear fanny packs like that, fuck. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. TJ looks like the kind of guy who likes to fuck on the go, for sure. <laughs> Perry Caravello 2.0. Yeah. Oh, that's a... That's a uh, uh, Windy, Windy City, City Heat. Heat. Yeah, Windy City Heat. So, uh, Kirk... Kirk and our old moderator Rucka, uh, huge, huge Windy City Heat fans. Are, is Dreadmere a Windy City Heat fan too? Probably. I mean, it's a classic movie. Yeah, and these guys, I mean, it's just like a cult status here. Do you guys have you heard of Windy City? I've never seen it, but I'm very familiar with it. Uh, it's fantastic. It's a it's a great movie. You could dig it up. It's a it's a good watch. Basically, the whole movie is a practical joke on the star of the movie Perry, and he's the only one that doesn't realize this is all a joke, a prank on him, and everyone else is in on it. And there's so many cues that this is like a total joke. Like the the producer's name is Sam Adams or some shit, and yeah. Perry doesn't really pick up on it. All right, well, guys, we have been trying to get to the debate quicker at the top of the show, so we're not just spinning our wheels. Shooting the shit about bullshit. So we should talk about the debate this week, which is, are fans entitled? Uh, at the tail end of the show, after the debate, I'll be having a Babcock tip. We'll be having some voicemail. The voicemail number is on the website, madcastmedia.com. That's also where you go to vote on these debates. And we have the results of last week's debate. But we should hear everyone's buzzer before we go on. Mine sounds like this. TJ? Kirk? Wrong! And Ron? There it is. If you hear a buzzer from anyone during this debate, that means someone is disagreeing with someone else or we're just chiming in with an interjection. And if you guys have any super chats in the chat room, we'll be reading those. I'll be checking in with you guys from time to time. But as our returning guest this week, TJ, I'm going to give you first stab at the debate. Are fans entitled? And before we uh, before you answer, I should give us a little bit of a setup because Game of Thrones just ended. And there was a what? huge there was a huge outrage and outcry from the fan base because many people, many fans didn't like season eight and i'll say i'm not one of those people because i'm not a fan <laughs> <laughs> and i i thought i thought season eight was just fine had a bunch of cool shit in it but i have a lot of theories on it and i think i'm gonna impress the hell out of everyone 
Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, everyone, especially people who are Game of Thrones fans. Because mm-hmm. you know what, TJ, after the show, people are going to say, wow, that Maddox is real smart, has a lot of thoughtful, insightful opinions about Game of Thrones, even though he's never seen it. So I'm going to throw <laughs> the baton to you. What do you think, TJ? Our, our fans entitled then? Ron, I would go to Ron, too, because Ron has a lot of th- theories on this. So, you know, okay. So the thing I've been thinking about a lot with uh, with Game of Thrones is uh, how it relates to the Star Wars franchise and the, and the whole petition to redo the season. So I, I do think that on some level, fans are entitled to at least have an opinion. Okay, you know, you know, this is I like or dislike or whatever. But when you take that entitlement and you bring it to, let's go to a public forum and start gathering signatures to change things, you're out of your fucking mind. Like, you don't deserve anything. Yeah, wow. So, uh-oh. <laughs> okay, so as a diehard fan, yes. uh, you, for one, <laughs> your raving review of, I was fine with it. Uh, you wouldn't change a thing. You didn't sign that petition. No, I didn't sign shit. I don't give a fuck. But here, but here's the thing. I mean, there's things. There's things I would do differently as a genius, as a master. I would say I'm a master cinematographer, master director, master editor, uh, master baiter. Other, I'm a master of a lot of things. So it checks out. But with Game of Thrones, I mean, there's definitely things I would have done differently and told the story differently. But my biggest criticism of the of the thing and uh, of the series is none of it fucking matters, and that's what I kept hearing over and over and over again from fans at the tail end of this the episode of season eight. They're like, "Well, what about this plot line? What about this character? None of that shit matter." I'm like, "No, idiots. That's the point. None of this shit matters." Ron, you're uh, you're nodding in some agreement. What do you think? Well, I like how you have plans of what you would have done to Game of Thrones when you just confessed, like, before the podcast started. You're like, yeah, I've watched, like, five episodes. Yeah, I've watched and five And you already episodes. have, like, whole ideas of yeah. how to make something better oh, yeah. that you haven't yeah. even consumed. Yes. I do like the idea of master cinematography, though. That's a yeah. bold yeah. choice on your part. Yeah, this podcast is a real fucking uh, <laughs> master's class <laughs> in cinematography. Oh, hey, Ron, don't touch the tripod too much because it might not go over the camera. <laughs> yeah, uh, Maddox is a real fucking go-getter. <laughs> yeah, these these cams are not even screwed into yeah. the master the audio shoe. took 20 minutes to get the podcast going oh like it's my fucking fault dude the <laughs> device you saw that shit i change nothing from week to week and every week everything has changed how the fuck it's is that amazing possible? how many laptops you need to make this podcast go a podcast needs like, like there's like four la- there's right. that one's the ones just in got the other porn room. on it I yeah. don't know. <laughs> there's, there's my porn server there's my torrent server yeah I mean, here, here, I mean of course like it's easy to like I mean I heard yeah the whole thing a million people signed a petition to redo Game of Thrones I, I want to go out on a limb I'm saying listen I'm one of the few people who actually enjoyed this season but I also <laughs> calibrated I, I knew what I was getting into I knew it wasn't going to be the fucking best so I just enjoyed it for what it is so part of me is like yeah fans are Part of me wants to say yes, fans are deserve to be entitled because they're the fan. You can say whatever that you want. But on the other hand, it's like I don't know, man. Just shut the fuck up. You're complaining about a TV show. You have a charmed life. You know? Like if this is the thing you give like, don't let the one petition you sign in life be a Game of Thrones <laughs> petition. Like sign any other petition. That don't let that be the thing that you give that much of a shit about. I think that's the thing that I'm bothered with. That's it. how I feel. Like I feel like fans have a right to expect a good product because they are the customers. They're paying for it. I imagine a lot of people are got HBO accounts like me just to watch Game of Thrones and they have a high expectation. But at the same time, I feel like most people are entitled in general anyway and they have these false expectations, these high expectations that are impossible to meet or they try to project their own ideas of where they want the plot to go so when it doesn't happen, they throw a, a fucking hissy fit about it. I mean, maybe it's that the people how are entitled are just it's just kind of testimony to how much of fans they are. Like was, how good this show was is that they're just well is that they're so fucking fired up about it. Right. I, I wanted to kind of piggyback on that. There's uh something I can't help but wonder like how many of the signatures of the million signatures or whatever it is of people that are like, we need to do it over are just like toddlers getting dragged out of amusement park because they don't want to leave. It's not even so much that they disliked the product that they got, but they don't want it to be fucking over yet. And literally the only way they can do it is be like, do over. You know, there's a thing in psychology where if you have like two friends, who let's say they've been best friends throughout all of college, never never had a fight, always been like together. You almost thought of them as two people. A week before graduation, they will get in a fight. And they will uh, never talk to each other again because that is an easier choice is uh, to maintain a separate sure. relationship than to maintain their current relationship in a new form. 
I I totally get that because I've been in relationships where Ooh, <laughs> now we're bragging. Uh, <laughs> it's not you know I've been in a relationship or two, no big deal. Um, this <laughs> this this one girl we totally hit it off and we're dating for a while, but we kept arguing all the time about everything, and it got to the point where we were dating long enough where. It's got it's like put up or shut up time and I got like we got to drop the L bomb, right? That's a big that's a moment that's a milestone in loathe. a relationship. Yeah, the loathe. love yeah, loathe. Yeah, I loathe you. I loathe you. That's right. <laughs> I really mean it, baby. But I could see that the relationship was never going to work out because we just kept arguing. And there was a point where there's a point where I I of all people get exhausted of argument and I just tell her can we just not argue? Like, I'm agreeing with everything you're saying. Can we just, you know, and then still we would argue. And I was like, this isn't going to work out. And there was a point where I was like, you know what? It's going to be easier if I don't so that we can go our separate ways. And I didn't. And we did. <laughs> so <laughs> there we go. And scene. And single. <laughs> right. uh, but TJ, I want to say something about something that you said earlier because – a lot of these fans are just upset, I believe, that the thing has ended. I right. put out a tweet the other day. It's like, wow, man, that ending to The Sopranos, and then I cross it out. Mad Men, cross it out. Seinfeld, cross it out. Dexter, cross it out. Lost, cross it out. Game of Thrones sure was an unprecedented disappointment. Man, every fucking series that this, the fans love, can you just give these fucking creators a little bit of credit? Here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. I think we all thought that Game of Thrones was going to be the one who was going to buck the trend. You know? Well, it like, already think, happened. The show is called Breaking Bad, and it ended fantastic. Yeah, it did. It did. But, like, I get, it was Game of Thrones, you know, it was, it was killing off characters that you mm-hmm. love. Like, they were setting so many precedents that we really thought, like, this, and th- th- we were going to forgive them for them rushing through season seven because we're like, well, well they're going to get to season eight and it's all it's all going to be worth it. And then they got to season eight and they just kept rushing through the whole goddamn thing. And uh, really, what should I mean? There should have there should have been a ten season show. And I think we're all mad at the opportunity that the creators had, not just to make great TV, but to make arguably the best TV ever. And you can't do that when you're rushing to your final seasons, when you're going from plot point to plot point. It's right. like, I saw where you wanted to go. I, a lot of people just didn't like the way they got there. Okay, so Ron, uh, two counterpoints. First, who cares? And second... Uh, <laughs> you don't have a second point, do you? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, but second, like I'm not sure what you're talking about. So, um, because... Well, it's because Kurt fans, you didn't watch the, whole... the goddamn no, show. No, I'm <laughs> trying not to skip spoilers because Kurt's like, I'm on season three. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. I started it right after the, the show ended. I started watching it. And I'm on episode five of season three. It, you're running the hurry up but offense. Like, that's don't for sure. you think? Don't you think? How about like, this? I'll step out for a second, and then you can talk about spoilers. No, no, no. Okay. Here, listen. Here, it's I not wanna, even really that necessary. It's more like to oh. talk about what actually happened. Yeah. I want to get to the point of like, should I mean? I kind of think fans are fucking right to be entitled. Boo! No way. <laughs> entitled for what do we? What do fucking creators owe fans? You owe them. How about this? Yeah. The fuck you make your show for me? Okay, I buy HBO. Oh, yeah. I'm the one making this shit happen. I'm the one who's supposed to be happy at the end of it. Consumer, right? Look, yeah, but but fans want endings that make them feel you good. You want Star Wars to be a movie? I'm the guy who's going to go to Galaxy Edge. I'm the guy who's going to buy some bullshit. I mean, I'm not that guy. But you know, you know what I mean? Like, like there are people who spend money on this. You got to make them happy. Like, yeah, we've been waiting for this for years. You better fucking deliver. No, yeah. you don't And if you have do, to- I will proselytize well, and I will I be think, the most insufferable I- fan ever. I think you bring up a good point because you say, I want it to please me, but you have to keep in mind there are literally millions of Game of Thrones fans, and you're probably not going to be able to please all of them. Yeah, and, and they're you're all... probably going to bitch anyway. But here's right. the thing. And there's only one Ron, though. If there's That's millions what we have to of think fans, about. Listen, and this is coming from someone who enjoyed the last season, but if there's millions of fans who hated the season of your show, are you willing to admit, hey, maybe we missed the mark a little bit? No, because like our creators infallible. Yeah, but here's the thing, Ron. It's a two word. It's a two word phrase in our, our vernacular that I like to point out, which is "crybaby bitches." Uh, that's <laughs> yeah. what it's what you these fucking fans. Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> how how dare you, Ron? That's not. I don't like that that's at all. Crybaby bitch kryptonite. Yeah, it is. It's the. <laughs> 
It's the I one mean, counter argument to the crime people, media argument. People are allowed to have opinions on uh, the media that they consume. Yeah, and as soon as they fucking get, get some expertise and know how to fucking tell a story, they wouldn't be just fucking sitting there with Cheetos stains on their sweats watching Game of Thrones. I'm the creator. I make the story I want. And here's your your job as a consumer. You either consume it or don't. You don't like it, quit fucking bitching. Don't sign a petition telling me how to do my fucking job because I'm going to come to yours and tell you how to do yours, shithead. One one movie series I was a huge fan of was the Terminator series, and after Terminator Salvation, which was the fourth movie, I fucking hated it. I said I'm done watching it. I haven't watched a Terminator movie since. It's not that hard. Yeah, right. You get a choice again. You keep bringing up the consumer thing, which I think is great. It's like so you kind of do owe something to c- the consumer, but also the consumer can just say fuck you at any moment, yeah, that's and that's fine yeah, too. But that's as the, the consumer, okay, some of us have like become attached to these properties. Yeah, but okay? the, the the criticism is disingenuous. What? Uh, How is it disingenuous? Because I don't think that people are upset that the the series ended badly. They're just upset that it ended. If there was no, another two they're seasons, they're upset it ended badly. There are some things that fail to happen that people are they're legitimately, legitimately upset about. It's not that they couldn't have been better. Like they could have earned that moment. And here's the thing: they didn't earn the fucking moment. Yeah. Okay, you know, and and I'm someone who enjoyed it, and I look past it. But in my heart of hearts, they didn't earn their fucking moments. No, they didn't. I don't even think they I didn't really cr- try. I didn't the cry thing too. at the end of Game of Thrones. Yeah, I was supposed. I to I should have fucking. I, it was right. like the one time a year where I cry. Okay, I cry during two things: uh, soccer games and, uh, and and Game of Thrones finales. And guess what? It didn't fucking happen in the Game of Thrones finales. So now I got to wait for the next show to come along so I can cry. Or just go to your. Weekly child soccer game on Saturday. I'll make and you cry, Rob. I assume that those are the games that make you cry, right? I don't know. Yeah, the futility only, of children trying yeah, to kick I, the I ball. I only cry the at U twelve playoff games. <laughs> uh, we got real quick. We got a super chat in the chat room from Leah Ferrante. Thank you, Leah. That's so cool. And she also says, "Are some fans more entitled than others? Like long term fans, are they more legitimate, or ones that spend more money? Are they more entitled?" I, I do get annoyed by. Um, I get. Annoyed. I hate long term fans so goddamn much. I, <laughs> I hate them in everything. I hate them with bands. I hate them with movies. Well, bands- Somehow, the, the fact that yeah. you figured out fucking Ezra Furman before me right. makes you a bigger <laughs> fan. Like, can't yeah. we just enjoy this one thing? Like, people immediately want to throw up walls and say, well, no, 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 no. You're like one of the new fans. Like, you know, it's like whenever the Dodgers get the World Series and everyone's like, oh, you're just a, a fan of the Dodgers when they get to the finals? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, people say that to, uh, said that about me. And the first time I experienced it, I'm from Utah, and when the Utah Jazz made it to the playoffs, I was kind of invested. Once they made it to the playoffs, made it. They made it to the playoffs like 25 years in a row. Oh, did they? Well, they made it to the finals in 97 and 98. That's probably oh, what you're talking. Sounds about. like I know exactly the type of person <laughs> who said what I'm about to say to me. <laughs> so the Kirk Wilcoxes of Utah were like, uh. No, that the jazz is doing well. You're a fan, but where were you when they weren't doing well? I'm like, not a fan. Yeah, because they, they suck. Yeah. They suck. And of course, I'm going to be excited about the fucking jazz if they're making it to the playoffs. Why would I give a shit about a losing team? I'm not fucking a zealot. I'm not going to invest in some fucking bullshit ass sports team, do or die. I don't give a fuck. I don't have an identity also, attached. I mean, to that. bold choice for a sports team. The, Utah Jazz. the jazz. Yeah. Oh, we could. I could do I a mean, whole podcast on that. I mean, oh, it's just I love like it. a real like. It. Can well, I tell you something well, really quick? Well, basketball made the joke like the New Orleans Jazz moved to Utah where they don't allow, allow music. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then there was a point when uh, some teams moved and the name the Hornets became available. Yes. Utah is the Beehive State. Yeah. Now, I know it's not exactly a Hornet and a Bee are not the same thing, but it was just it's a team gave away yeah. a name. You yeah. got it on your fucking flag. You got a Beehive on there. And Utah also has Just a, take it. Their local hockey team is called the Buzz. Or no, that was their local softball team. They had the Buzz and then the hockey Soft- team. Yeah. The- <laughs> <laughs> you're a deep cut fan. You, I think you're a bigger, you must be a bigger jazz fan than you claim to be if you're following the softball team. Well, we call ourselves jazz heads. <laughs> Have you guys uh, ever followed the expansion team they're doing, the New Mexico Ska? No, is that a real thing? Are no, you? Kidding? Oh my god! Of course not, Ska. <laughs> I am mad at myself for not getting it'd be that. Fucking, yeah. It'd be fucking. awesome. Where if it would was. the Ska they have just, come from? They skank out to the game. <laughs> like, <laughs> pick it up, pick it up, pick from it up. Orange it up. County originally. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, the fucking tailgate parties. Just the trashiest. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a lot of baloney that sells out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make them sandwiches. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Scott, is there a dorkier brand of music? 
than ska. Also in basketball. A lot of basketball references today. Yeah, right. I listened to so much ska. I listened to a lot of ska. Oh my God, I was so much ska. I used to buy uh, uh, suits from the Salvation Army for 75 cents and wear them to Mighty Mighty Boss Tones and the Toasters. You really? The Toasters, yeah. My my Saturday night was like, I'm going to go see a ska band. It's cool. I'm going to go by myself because no one wants to go with me, but I have my ska friends. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Go to the show. Oh, I was... Okay, it is a one music that you just do not like. It's grows it's not, old with yeah, people. It's not aging well. Yeah. Uh, Ron, I got to give you a point because that is a good tangent, and you are the rear admiral of tangents. Oh, thank you very good much. Good job. Good job. That's what your job is. Uh, but I should get us back on track because I do want to talk about this fan entitlement. I kind of want to talk about my high school ska days, if that's okay. <laughs> yeah, can we Ta- stick with that? Taylor Nikolai in the chat room says, every single ska song is exactly the same song. You know what? That's the same criticism of reggae and also correct. Uh, <laughs> also correct. <laughs> also... Th- Kind of the Ramones, but I fucking love that song, so I'll, I love it. Wow, this is you're doing double duty, Ron. You're pulling us right back on that tangent. Uh, but the fan entitlement, what are you going to say, TJ? I wanted to say something about the fan. Okay, so I'll speak out of two sides of my mouth here in terms of, because uh, I'm I'm definitely a fan of Game of Thrones, and so I've got like you know my fanboy cred. I've, I've been with it since the beginning, hey, so like, here, I think same I deserve, I get to say what I want to say. Have you read um, the books? Fuck you. Um, <laughs> uh, the, um, uh, yes, but, uh, of course. The creators of the show, uh, and I think a lot of people who are really deep into this kind of are aware of this information, people that signed the petition, that they were essentially given the opportunity to make more Game of Thrones. Yes. And they said, no, we'd like to cram the rest into eight yeah, episodes. Yeah, because we want to go make a Star and Wars so, movie. Because we want to do Star Wars. Is that what they're doing now? Uh, that's yeah. what they're doing, which is so oh. beautifully, like, I don't know, poetic or ironic or something, because that was like the other film or the other media franchise to get one of these very notable petitions, right? Mm-hmm. So they're just fucking burning from one burning ship to the other or whatever. Um, but because they did that, I feel like it gives like a little, like a chip to the fans to kind of use and say like, hey, fuck you. Like you told us from the beginning that you were going to phone it in a little bit. So when they're mad, including myself a little bit, like, I there's kind of some, you got something to work with there. I don't yep. know. Like, I agree, man. I agree. Listen, they kind of promised they were going to deliver something. I mean, it's like when, when you're working with somebody and they decide to cut out early for another gig and they do a shitty job. You're like, you're not going to remember them fondly. Right. You know, and they had the game uh, HBO. As HBO, far as I heard, was like was like, yeah, let's we'll do make this, this for the rest of time. Yeah, and they're like, no, nah, we're cool. No, like, we're fuck good. You. you had the chance to make history, and you just you fell a little short. It's a fucking TV show that lasted a decade, and it was one of the highest rated, highest grossing, biggest production, biggest fanfare. They did make history, and it ended with a slow fart. It right. didn't end it with a slow fart. Everyone fucking dies. Everyone dies. Everyone dies. Kirk. Eat shit. No, they <laughs> don't. That's one of the problems. <laughs> God damn it! And the best in the world. If I really knew cinematography, if I, 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 I wish I knew more about the series. I love That's how we debate things where half the debaters have no idea what the fuck happened on the show. Yeah, I don't know. Look, it doesn't matter. I watched the, most of the last season. I watched like episode two and episode three and five. Wow! Uh, I, I saw what most a fucking of it. hero. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> saw the ending. I thought the ending was just fine. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> entitlement. Entitlement is like okay. There's a, there's a a concept that's implied with the word entitlement, which is oh, okay. you owe somebody okay. something. All right, how about this? Yeah, right? I go into a restaurant. Okay, it's just supposed to be a great fucking <laughs> no, restaurant. I know it's going. I'm excited to be in this <laughs> restaurant. Hey, it's going to cost fifty dollars for this steak. Be like, you kidding me? This is going to be a great steak. I have the steak. It's not a fifty dollars steak. It's a six dollar steak you get from a Las Vegas buffet. I complain. I'm like, hey, this steak is kind of shitty. They're like, oh, we don't owe you fucking anything. And even more so, the chef comes out and is like, "You know what? I didn't really feel like it tonight." Yeah, yeah. I just want—I I, I really want to go cook pasta. I really want—I'm <laughs> excited. So I, new, so I, I stopped cooking the steak up. and I went to cook pasta. Like, no, there's entitlement, but there's also like we were sold a false bill of goods. Okay, Ron, here's you. Oh, are you gonna search for the right sound effect on this? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he sounds like a sweet baby. So yeah, that's good. I was expecting this to be. There we go. Uh, there's Ron. Okay, no. there's Ron right there. Now, here's the thing, Ron. Um, you paid you paid your fifty dollars, and what your complaint is not like, oh, I go to shooty steak. Your complaint is, 
oh man, the last bite of the steak isn't that good. I want my yeah. full $50. <laughs> 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 yeah. There's a little bit of gristle on the Please. steak. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fine steak. Just the last bite of it, you got a little bit of gristle. You accidentally chewed twice. Oh, no. But everybody knows that's the most important bite. Is it? Because dessert comes afterwards, and dessert is Star Wars. They're <laughs> <laughs> what? They're directing Star Wars now, right? Well, didn't you predict at the beginning of the year that Star Wars is going to fall off a cliff? What it? Oh yeah, that's right. Oh <laughs> you man, did? That, that was my prediction, and I'm I think I'm right because the new Star Wars movie was announced. Oh, and how it was dare you first, validate him? It was the first time. Yeah, here. Uh, thank you, Kirk. Uh, it was the first time <laughs> I've se- I've sensed on the internet that people were a little bit like, yeah, we're over this shit. I don't Go know, man. Yourselves. Galaxy's Edge Disneyland opens next week. People are pretty pumped. What is that? Galaxy's is, Edge is the new Star Wars land. Hey, you and just went to go. You just went to Star Wars. I, Ron. How was I, no, 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 I went. Or, I went uh, yesterday to Disneyland, yeah. but Star Wars Land isn't open, oh. uh, so I, I I don't know what it's like. But it's, you know, you could see it off in the distance. It's going to be like Cars, uh, um, Radiator Spring, or Cars Land, or whatever, where it completely surrounds you, so you won't be able to see any other part of the park when you're inside of it. It's really, gonna be completely Star Wars Land. People are seem to be very excited. Um, the guy who made Harry Potter Land at Universal, mm. they tapped him to head up this that project. That shit's pretty cool. I went yeah, there for the first time recently. Yeah, Harry Potter Land, even if you don't yeah. give a shit about Harry Potter, pretty it's cool. hard to walk through it and be like, eh, that's, that's fucking Harry Potter. Like, oh, that's a Dick Cal, you're on. Potter. I'm going to walk through that thing and try not to give a fuck. I'm, uh, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. You can do it. Listen. You it's, can totally do yeah? it. But it's cool. The it's Harry cool. Potter and the Forbidden Journey is by far the best theme park ride I have ever been is on really? in my one? life. Yeah, it's... It's 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 fucking awesome. Even if you don't give a shit about Harry Potter, it is it's an awesome awesome ride. How long does it last? Um it's one of those ones where they like you the conveyor belt goes around continuously. Oh, um, like the uh, haunted house at Yeah, the haunted mansion yeah. except yeah, the haunted there's mansion. exciting parts of it and there's yeah. real life elements and yeah. then screen elements. I would say it has to be between like 90 seconds and 2 minutes, maybe yeah, two and a half. It's not that's that's uh, it was it's just long enough to make me a little bit ill. It has to be a, yeah. like it has to be at least 2 minutes long. Yeah, a 2 minute ride is like I feel like I I earned uh, or the ride earned its line. Yeah, it, it, and to be honest, one of the best parts about that particular ride is oh. the fact that the line is actually really entertaining. The oh, one that's time because yeah. you're walking through Hogwarts, yeah. so if you're into like Harry Potter shit, yeah. you're basically gonna. Cream it's a your fun dreams. world. Like I never read the books, and I wasn't, you know, obviously I'm I'm uh, uh, too old to have enjoyed it as a fucking child. So fuck you, kids. But um. I, I, I can look at the series as <laughs> it's not a rage directed towards innocent children. <laughs> yeah, because they get it so much better. Every kid today has it so fucking good. Oh, they have entertainment like pouring out everywhere. They can't trip and not you. Can, they're literally tripping over entertainment like tablets all laying all over the house. I've it, seen these fucking. It kids. is so much easier to be. Remember when you had like you fucking had a fight over what to get to watch, yeah. and now you have your own little screen that you get to watch whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, and each kid has their own screen in the back of a TV, in the back of a car, plus a TV screen built in. The back of the seat, and these kids are still like, well, I'm bored. I wanna. You know what, though? It's making for soft kids. That's for goddamn sure. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you think yep, we can all agree on Game that? right. Now they're going to be complaining about a lot of shit later. Every, and everyone's just a fucking YouTuber now. You got two kids in the back seat, both yeah, fucking just, live vlogging. I love how we just turn into old men just in a fucking podcast. Four white dudes with yeah. scruffy facial hair bitching about the youth and ideas kids we about, don't have. Kids ideas don't about have. how to make this world better. I tell you, when Dadix here does have a kid, <laughs> uh, watch out. Yeah, those kids are going to be sharp. It's probably going to be the biggest pussy in the world. <laughs> Who, my, my kids or yeah. me? Is it my kids? Your kids. Would, my, my kids? That would be hilarious. It's going to be, it, like, <laughs> like, it's, the Come child on. will be unintentionally Amish because it won't have access to any electron. <laughs> there will be no iPad. There will be no oh, electronics. How? Everything will be so strictly oh monitored God. based on the old world that you yeah, come from. Yeah, right. What There's, if the kid is going to be like, Dad, I love Star Wars. I think it's the best. Oh, and get gonna, out, pack I'll your tell kid. you what, it definitely didn't die in 2019. Pack your shit, buddy. Let's get the fight we're going, we're going down to the Kmart leave you in the parking lot like my, like my parents did uh, <laughs> that <laughs> well, that's explains so much true story <laughs> my parents have left me in parking lots multiple times uh, but anyway back to something that's not super depressing um, <laughs> Star Wars uh, no but here's the thing about the Harry Potter universe I can see it and I realize like as an adult I'm like that's a fun fucking universe and if I, I still enjoy it as an adult but as a kid I, I know I would have gone bat 
bat shit for fu- fucking Harry Potter. Do you know that there's a there was a problem with um they had with kids who were really in Harry Potter is when they didn't get their owl or they didn't get their letter to go to Hogwarts when they turned eleven. No. And they all started like it was a little too young to realize that some things they, just aren't real. Wow. And I was like, oh man, that's a that's a hard lesson to learn. You think any parents bribe their way into Hogwarts? <laughs> <laughs> How much would it cost? What uh fake Quidditch documents would you have to forge? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have to bribe the guy in the broom he's a, racing team. He's a beater. Yeah, he's a beater on the right, team. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Um so here's here's the other thing too about uh fan entitlement. Okay, you you are allowed. Here's the only thing you're entitled to do: like something or don't. That's it. I got a new now, video. Am I allowed to talk about it online? Why I don't like something? Yes, absolutely. But you're. But where you? Where? Where you, does it stop? Where you stop? Where you need to um, back the fuck up and and go right back into fuck off zone is signing a petition telling them how to do their fucking job you know, and tell their stories. I, I do agree because it is. It, I mean, it is a little bit fucking. Um, it's it's a big fuck you move to everybody who worked on that show for sure. It's to sign a petition to be like, hey, we want to redo what you just did. Yeah, can you just? How about this? Like, would you ever petition a painter to redo a painting? Be like, we fucking hate that painting. Yeah, redo it, man. Get somebody else to redo it. Right. This shit. It's also it's like pretty much all the same fucking people too. So it's like yeah. fuck everything that you did that made me love you for the last nine and three quarters years. Here, here, it's at the tail end. You suck. Everything you did is bullshit. Yeah, and here's here's the thing too with um you know with the fan entitlement telling them to you know sign a petition or or whatever to to redo the ending of the show. Adam Carolla had a tweet that was just like, "You guys raved about this show for over a decade. You enjoyed it week after week. You tuned in. You had your parties. You had your themed cupcakes. You dressed up like fucking dorks. You enjoyed the shit out of this show. And here you are at the tail end, over crossing the finish line, saying fuck you to the creators whose content you enjoyed for over a decade, whose Who's uh who who gave you your shitty boring lives purpose every Sunday? Now you're now you're angry at these guys. You guys are entitled to jack shit. How about a thank you to these creators who busted their asses? And one of these the actors from the show too said the same thing. She goes she goes guys we worked eleven months on that series. We worked countless nights working consecutive nights just right, to like shoot famously long nights. Yeah, insanely yeah. long. So long that the that the set decorator forgot a Starbucks cup on the on the table <laughs> and everyone's like, "Oh, oh, Starbucks cup." Uh. Like, guys, it's a TV show still. Right. At the end of the day, they're Listen, not I agree with everything you're saying. Literally everything you're saying. But that Starbucks cup <laughs> that shit's unforgivable. They, they should have just show, ed- you dude, edit. I'm a fucking editor yeah. for a living, and it's not just me. You go through mic, you Reducers, go through sound, you go through color, you yeah. go through oh, effect. lots of notes. There, and you tell me every oh, single oh. fucking eyeball missed that cup. That's unacceptable. They should have owned it, and they should have had Howard Schultz take over the throne at the end of Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> the Game of Thrones. They did kind of own it with their response, but then yeah, then they what was the cup, response? Uh, that that was a totally mistake. Daenerys ordered an herbal tea. Oh, that's uh, funny. But that's then really like, funny. but they also left water bottles in the finale i saw that really like, underneath the feet i'm like ah you're making it harder and harder for me to defend you you know uh, how many mistakes do you have to have before you're like guys it, it's just i know you worked hard on this but in the end here's the big note here's your big legacy felt rushed what is it like fucking 800 hours of tv content listen because i'm gonna can't t- have one fucking water i'm gonna tell <laughs> the game of thrones creators exactly what the first woman i ever had sex with told me Slow down. <laughs> what? What? In regards to what? Your your uh uh. In regards to the speed of his fucking. In regards speed of his fucking. In to- regards to everything. <laughs> in regards to the most important thing, the finale. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I yeah, wouldn't, I mean- wouldn't know. I never had that problem. Um. Uh- <laughs> Uh, Leah in the chat room says, what about the new Sonic animation? Okay, so that's a really good example because that's one that is very contemporary that good just point, happened. Yeah. The new Sonic design came out. First of all, they should have known this was going to happen because a few months ago, probably like five, six months ago, they teased it. They just put a silhouette of the new Sonic and everyone's like, first of all, the <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog has really meaty human legs and everyone's like, what the fuck is this? He looks like a basketball player. Why does he have legs like that? Why are his legs so Adam hairy? Some boy legs. Yeah, it looked creepy, and everyone's like, "Ugh, is this gonna be mm-hmm. like a weird hairy Sonic?" <laughs> and then, and then the, the final trailer finally came out, and it's so much worse than anyone imagined. 
it's like I've seen memes that are that have clown on it, it that look better than the final design they went with. It's like no fucking focus testing. They didn't right. do any fan service. They clearly didn't do any focus testing. No, so there's no point. Way. I mean, the fans spoke and they were yeah. like, "Hey, yeah, we're going to go back to the drawing board. We're going to redo this." And they movie said, a "Yeah, bit. we're going to do it." Also, the, but even without the even without Sonic in that trailer. I mean, I don't know if that was the worst part of the trailer for me. Right, right. I right. mean, all the comedic moments in that trailer fell very flat to me. Like it, just, and it just seemed like so fucking over the top also, and cheesy and ridiculous. I couldn't tell if it was taking itself seriously or poking fun at it. Yeah, that's that's the. I had a problem with that too. Uh, Jim Carrey, who uh, I'm a big fan. I don't like him or not. He's yeah, insane. Me too. His his performance style is incredible, and he's playing. A character, Dr. Robotnik, who is, he's Russian, right? He's like a caricature. He's this little bowling ball thing. He's and, actually and Italian. He, he's Mario. Is he? <laughs> That's what Sega originally made him as. Is he oh. actually kind of like, to be? Right? He's more of a Mussolini. Kind of, no, no yeah. t- Teddy Roosevelt. Wasn't he Teddy Roosevelt in pajamas <gasps> and they converted him to Dr. Robotnik? Oh, is that what it was? I think so. Oh, I don't know. I just always assumed it was like Sega's kind of dig at Nintendo's like, our bad guys, you're a good guy. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, in any it, case, yeah. I guess my point was that like i feel like uh jim carrey's doing like just kind of like a i'm a mean boy accent voice and there's like so much meat on the bone there to like do something with to me yeah. it's like jim carrey was going back to his 90s performance and i really appreciated that like the 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 plastic face the rubber face kind of guy just, yeah just like the way he's acting like it's like a throwback to like his characters like in the mask and ace ventura it seems like a yeah. throwback jim carrey and we haven't seen that in two well, I, that's what i'm saying i don't think he did enough like i think that it's like for a guy that's capable of such like insane like facial expression and voices and you know just like animation but, like but i mean the fans spoke and now they're going to change it and i think like kind of like they made the right move because if they didn't that movie would have flopped. You know, uh, you now know at what? least they're going to come out and they're going to see this movie like, hey, is this as bad as we think it is? Right. Now, here's the thing. Okay. Normally, if it's like, you know, I want them to do a good job. I was really disappointed with the Sonic design. I wish they would have done a better job right out the gates. However, the amount of entertainment we have all collectively gleamed from this shitty trailer will by far, by surpass. magnitude, surpass the amount of entertainment we would have gotten mm-hmm. from a mediocre Sonic movie with the design that we all liked. I think that they kowtowed to the mob. They shouldn't have. They should have plowed plowed forward. As much as I hate, I would hate the design in the movie, I would like to see that shitty design and shitty movie come out and just be panned you're for talking, the rest of history. But you're talking about, like, this is the, the entertainment value of, of a meme, which disappears almost as quickly as it appears. You're really going to sit through a two-hour Sonic movie and enjoy how shitty it would be? Here's the thing. People would do it. It's not for us. Like, the target demo of the Sonic movie, I mean, of course, like, fucking 40-year-old guys, like, like, uh, you know, creepy dudes. A bunch of creepy dudes. I'm going to go see it. Uh, But it's mostly kids. But also uh, dudes like me. Um, and, and we're going to go see it no matter what. Kids are going to see it no matter what. And kids actually probably like this stupid bullshit because kids are dumb as fuck and my, they don't have any good taste. My sister said she th- showed my three-year-old nephew the trailer and he immediately said, I want to see this. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Because it's not for us. No. Even though, like, nostalgically, it like, kind of is. It should be. I think that we would, or I, I don't know, that people would be more likely to see the train wreck than they will be the corrected version, which is going to cost the studio however many millions of fucking dollars, and all you want in the first place is for three-year-olds to show up. Oh, who's the Zoom boy? I want to see that. He's blue, cool legs. They don't give a shit. Like, that's your tar- target demo, and they should, I don't know. TJ, um, meow. Uh... <laughs> 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 that, that that fucking trailer, <laughs> that line. There's someone someone recorded a a movie screening where that trailer came on before the movie, and the entire audience in unison, uh, unprompted, they all said that out loud, and everyone in the audience laughed. It was they had the best time. This is a making of a, a bad movie in uh, in the making that we are seeing in real time, and we are all contributing <laughs> to, and we're all part of it. I'm like, you know what, guys, lean into it. Make the character design <gasps> shittier. Add some pickups that are awful. Make some dorkier jokes. Make, make him it, worse. Yeah, make make. More. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, as a big fuck you. It's like you know what. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a fucking douchebag. I made Fast and the Furious. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with Sonic the Hedgehog, clearly. You know what? I'm going to add some fucking Vin Diesel to 
<laughs> just recast recast some of the lines with Vin Diesel's name. Right. You, and just you. give him fucking Abe Vigoda yeah. like eyebrows and just change elements yeah. of his make his teeth bigger. Maybe that's what I'll put on my Twitter bio that I was the punch up writer for Sonic. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that'd be so funny. Yeah. You know what? I just want the rest of the world to feel the pain and suffering and misery that us Godzilla fans have had to endure since the Matthew mm. Broderick Godzilla from 1998. That's when it which, started for you. Yeah. Uh, Haley Haley, uh, and I, on the Godzilla vs. Podcast Zero podcast, we just reviewed that, and it is not as bad as I remember. It is much, much worse. Uh, <laughs> it is like, it is just, even by today's standards, which are relatively low, but like, there, it, you can also see like how dated uh, dialogue and culture has become because there's scenes in that movie where they're running after each other, calling each other retards. <laughs> Oh, it's such a 90s insult that's amazing yeah we got a couple uh chats in the chat room we got a weird one from uh catholic traditionalist uh this is gonna be an interesting one he says uh what's your maddox what's your thought on the sjw feminists pushing their anti-man agenda on tv and movies <laughs> such as brie larson and captain marvel and the new batwoman tv show trailer for the cw i haven't seen the batwoman trailer have you guys seen it i haven't seen it either but i just do love anytime there's like a female forward it's like fucking anti-man i like, think i think it's yeah, brie yeah. larson in particular because brie larson had that moment during an interview recently where she was with chris chris oh i remember reading that yeah, i read the bat- i read that quote in context though and i was like ah, that kind of he, yeah, sorry. I remember it just felt like a little bit like I see what people are saying anti man, but like I didn't get that vibe at all. I didn't get that it was an anti man thing. My masculinity is not so fragile that I can't handle a comment like that. But I did get the that she was being a little bit smarmy because the guy was like, who was it, Chris Hel- Helms? Hem- Hemsworth. Yes, Hemsworth. Yeah. yeah, he was like, oh, you'll be the the female Brad Pitt or yeah, female uh, not Brad Todd Pitt, Cur- uh, t- uh, uh, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Yeah, you'll be the female Tom Cruise if she does her own stunts, and she goes. <laughs> Or I'll be the female me. It's like, c- get the fuck over yourself. Can you just take a compliment? He's comparing you to the most successful, best actor. And also, no, but it also the, like the other side of that coin is like, dude just can't take a fucking note. What's the note? Dude can't take what a note. What is the note? Because it is just like, or I'm just like, uh, you can, you could tell me who I am, not in the relationship to just another dude. Like, it's just who I am. Be like, yeah, or you just, just do your own note. Let's reverse the roles because eventually, if, if women, like, we have, we're going to have a, a woman stunt, a uh, stunt person, right? A stunt woman who's going to be the best of the field. She's going to be the most famous. She's going to be the most fantastic. If a, if a guy was compared to that woman, what a fucking compliment. What an honor. Yeah, but here's the thing. Like, I think that in that moment, a lot of times people hi- go on one specific thing that is said. And what you don't realize is that there's been a lot of other shit that that person has dealt with. And it's like, this is the, you see the aggression pop out when they're like, yeah, or this. But there's like loads of other fucking shit that they went through. And then we just harp on this one thing. It's like, I, I don't know. It just seems like, uh, I mean, I get it. But like, I don't think there's any like anti man thing that they're trying to do. Yeah, I think with it's a stretch. Show. Yeah, I think it's a stretch to do an I get, I mean, I get like people, it's, I'm always amazed at how much fired up people get about stuff. Cause you know, like the off, like the weird shit interviewers say to movie stars being interviewed. Yeah, all the time. And so I think, yeah, you know, you do a bunch of these. After a while, it's like, you know, you let off some steam. I get right. it, but I, I think that there was a graceful way to handle that situation, which is to be like, yeah, and then maybe I'll join a cult. Maybe I'll join a Scientology, like make a Scientology joke or something. Or maybe be, be like, yeah, it'll be the girl. graceful way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Master cinematographer yeah, over that's here. Right. Right. That's, that's right. right. Master of many, many things. Uh, Olo in the chat room says, Batwoman is pandering to the 4-6% to of comic book fans and lightly annoying most of the rest. She better has very good writers or else it will flop. I haven't seen... I don't know anything about Batwoman, but who cares? It's a fucking... Ba- it's a Batwoman. What? It's not... Again, Like if, if it's Batwoman, it was kind of like DC's attempt to directly cater to a female audience so if they're yeah. trying to do that with well, the that, tv show wait the, is that saying the batwoman is pandering to f- the four percent four to six percent of people that are comic book fans well, that, that's a, and then the rest of us mean me i'm just not i've never been a comic book person nothing against it uh am i in i don't know but I don't, for see, me? I don't understand I don't, why people get fired up like like if, if you don't want to watch captain marvel or you don't want to watch batwoman like then don't watch batwoman it's like again it kind of comes back to like it's not for you right so it's like, yeah, they're trying to, like, if if I was somebody who was, like, into comic books, it's like, yeah, I like to market to more than just men because they're only half of my potential audience. Like, if we can get these fucking females on board, 
I'm going to make a lot more money, so I'm going to market to them. So, like, if you don't like the show, like, it goes back to what you were saying. Like, just don't fucking watch it. I had a uh, a friend of mine on uh, Instagram the other day because there's a it's a hot but hot bet uh, hot button issue right now with abortion and everything. And she was she posted a meme where it's uh, like her waking up and you know going out to dismantle the patriarchy. It's like start your day by dismantling the patriarchy. And I messaged her. I sent her a private DM. I'm like, can you not? <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. Can you? <laughs> yeah, whenever um, whenever anybody talk about Handmaid's Tale, I'm always like, hey, listen, man, Handmaid's Tale, crazy. Pretty good for me, though. <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, I've I, never I, seen it. I don't know what it's about. I'm sitting free as a white male. Like, I am coming out on top. Let me tell you, that is a dicey joke to make at a dinner party. It is either going to go over great or it's going to be real awkward. The Handmaid's Tale. I don't know anything about that show. I can't joke about it because I don't know. I, it sounds like it's about a bunch of rapey shit that happens, right? It's pretty fucked up. That's, yeah, that's, that's, like, a, that's the full log line. Yeah. It's, a like, bunch of rapey show, shit it's, like, it's like a bunch of fucking, I don't and know, then, Margaret but, Atwood rapey shit. It's like shit. in the not too distant future rapey shit yeah yeah we got some uh we got some people in the chat room we got uh olo still in here taylor still chiming off we got super arrogant bros what up uh we've got oh we got uh matt monday matt in there what's up matt jarbo homie uh we got olo in there and uh leah's still in there she says i'm a lesbian and i can say most lesbians turned on ruby rose long ago who's ruby rose I don't know who Ruby Rose is. Turned on Ruby turned Rose. Turned like, uh, like turned against Ruby Rose? I don't know. But uh, we got another comment from Catholic Traditionalist. It says, you guys don't know what Brie Larson said against all white men. You also haven't seen the anti-man Batwoman trailer. Seriously, you guys should watch it. It's utter crap. Um, I don't know. Can't wait to check out didn't the it, I think Brie Larson, this. Didn't she say like she wouldn't be on a panel with like all white men or something like that? Or is that what she said? I don't know, like man. That. This shit's out of control. We got uh, Marty McFly says Ruby Rose is Batwoman. Okay, so that's who Ruby oh, okay, Rose is, okay. the, the new Batwoman. Look, I don't, I don't know, guys. Here's the thing. You vote with your dollar. You're not entitled to jack shit because right. the other the implication of the word entitlement is somebody owes you something. They don't owe you entertainment. They don't owe you a good time. They don't owe you a story. They don't owe you an ending that you want. And here's the thing about Game of Thrones and the argument I made in my in my book a while back, which is that you can just sit down and watch that series from any episode because it doesn't fucking matter. And the show ended exactly how I predicted the show began, which is all the characters had a history that you didn't know about, and none of it mattered up to the point where the series started. And the series ended just in the same way. It just ended with a record drop, like the, a needle drop on the middle of a record. That's where it ended. You're you're not looking at the start of time of these characters. You're looking at a brief moment in history of these fictional characters. And the people, the way that people extrapolate so much from this fucking series, like, oh, some guy was like tweeting, he said, uh, the fact that uh, what what's the what's the woman at the end of the 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 series the uh, Batwoman? No, the this one of the sisters, the Snowden sisters. Uh, you know the the brown haired Snowden sister at John Snow, Edward Snowden. Well, who's the, who's the <laughs> Stark? Okay, you're saying you, a lot of things. You, Arya Stark. Arya Stark. That's the one. Yeah. You thought that the Stark's name was House Snowden? <laughs> yeah, Edward Snowden. Oh yeah, e- emails are coming. <laughs> You've. Stupid, dumb <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> you know, so where we left well, off, the Starks have been snowed trapped in an embassy for years <laughs> by their own volition. Pretty, pretty similar, right? Because the embassy in, is like the Winterfall, Winterfell, the Dorth oh, Tower, and, and like Edward Snowden got exiled to Russia. That's Winterfall? right. Winterfall. Winterfall. Isn't it? Winterfell. Winterfell? <laughs> What's it called? Winterfell. Oh, oh my God! I yeah. got one letter wrong in a word. Oh no! I guess I'm a huge fucking dumbass idiot. I I didn't know one fucking and I got snow instead of Snowden. Snowden. Instead Instead of snow, it's Big Stark. Fuck- it's not a snow. Oh, Stark. <laughs> Uh, anyway. How Stark, yeah, John to- Snow. Yeah, okay. Tony Stark. Yeah, jo- Julia Stark. Who's her name? What's her- Tony Ar- Stark. Aria. Aria Stark. Okay, then she's like, she tells some guy to sit Aria. down. Aria. Aria. Ar- Aria. It's not you're, the way you say it. It sounds. It sounds like you're saying like Ariola. Ariola Stark. Ariola Stark. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> the chat room's going nuts. You would never <laughs> this off. Uh, we got Red Minus in the chat room says, Ambatics, that's a great point, actually, as a snapshot in time of the characters. Thank you, you Red Minus. You read the ones where they agree with No, you. I'm not real. Yeah, he, and also, this is the man who has not watched the Look, show. Ma- listen, He's sp- listen <laughs> spouting Maddox, this I'm your friend, but even I have trouble defending that one. <laughs> right, that's the one above the one you just read. Matt Jarvo. Yeah, okay, pretty good. Uh, Eva, Eva Strange says, poor Snowden is rolling in his bunk bed. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, are we talking about the guy from the, the Game of Thrones or the uh, the, the political? No, that's the political okay. one. Yeah, political that's one. for sure. The there's no bunk one. beds in Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sure there's bunk beds in Game of Thrones. Are you fucking kidding me with those fucking soldiers? You don't think a few of them bunked up in the in the fucking series in the fucking medieval Sleeping times? Sleeping on the goddamn ground, don't man. Don't ask him that question. You would know the answer if you had watched any of it. Uh, yeah, well, I've seen five episodes or six. That's it. That's plenty. Anyway, so Edward Snowden, or what's her name? Arya Stark. Ariel, Ar- Arya Stark? Arya Ari- Stark? Ariel yeah, you know, that's Stark. it. You got it right on the nose. Yeah, so she tells she tells some guy, some like king king lord <laughs> at the end, he's like, oh, I should be king. And she goes, sit down. Okay. It's kind of a funny little comedic relief. First of all, no, it was Sansa Stark who did that, not Arya, but move on. What's the difference? They're just the same people. They're, if like- you watch the show, you would understand the answer to that question, but <laughs> move on. Okay, so anyway, this chick, she tells she tells this guy, she's like, she's like, hey, sit down. And then someone tweeted, I was like, uh, Sansa Stark telling that mediocre straight white man to sit down added five years to my life. Uh. It's like, dipshit, it's a fucking fictional TV show. You're not, this isn't like a fucking... Also, yeah. <laughs> he was a mediocre white man. It he was deserved to sit down. Who cares? He was basically an extra. Like, as like as much as being like a somewhat regular character on the show, he mattered not. Can it was you, the perfect person to like do re- that bit with. Can you start a review show where you just review things you haven't seen? <laughs> Like yeah. I just want you to do like Fifty Shades of Grey mm-hmm. and just talk about it, but only through other people's right. fucking. Like, I did, fucking forty five long- degrees of off white is my favorite <laughs> book and movie series. Long time ago, that was an old article series I did on my website, movies I haven't seen, and I started reviewing them long time ago. Uh, but here's here's the thing. Here's the other thing I want to talk about with with this uh, Game of Thrones nonsense. I am also so fucking tired of. Uh, and I, I, I'm tired of everything. First of all, I'm tired of everything, just everything. But <laughs> thank you, right? But I'm tired of the criticism that there wasn't enough diversity in the show, and I'm tired of identity. I, I'm tired of the phrase identity politics, and I'm tired of the concept of identity politics, and I'm tired of the criticism of identity politics. I'm tired of everything about it. And here's the thing: I was looking at the series. I actually was so fired up about this, Ron. I actually wrote an entire new video script that's coming on my YouTube channel. It's coming about Game of Thrones, specifically about the criticism that the series was not diverse enough. The final shot of the so of the entire fucking season, of the entire series, has a dwarf, has a black guy, has two women, one of them's an Amazon. They they have a, a bunch of She's just tall. They have <laughs> They have. She's. I wouldn't put Amazon in your script. She's like a tall. She's like a tall. She's a bruiser. She's like a battle axe. Like she's All like right. big. You know. She's like a. She's got some. She's got. She's like hefty. You know. Like she got can some take meat a, on it. She's yeah. got some meat on. She's like more adjectives. She's Keep built going. like a brick shit house. This chick. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This chick, man. She's got your back in a bar fight for sure. Anyway, you got her, <laughs> and then you got like some old dude. You got a fat guy. You got like. How much more diverse? You get, and then the, and then you got a fucking guy in a wheelchair. Yeah, like, it was how much perfect for the throne? Because all I can do is sit. Yeah, exactly. So you have uh, you have the winner of this entire fucking competition of Game of Thrones. Like he won the game, and he's the he's the leader, the king leader, and he's a guy in a wheelchair. How much more fucking diversity can you cram into one fucking scene? And the one thing that that, that everybody's like, oh, there weren't enough women. How come a woman didn't win? Oh. Well, how many fucking Asians in, is in Game of Thrones? How many did they cast one fucking Asian in that whole series? One fucking Asian. Did they cast any Hindus? Did they cast any Pakistanis? Any Arabs? There's Maybe like there's way like, too many Dothraki. I mean, I think you gotta watch the whole show. There's like three black people in all of Game of Thrones. <laughs> But one of them made it to the end. He <laughs> <laughs> I just love that. You, I'm writing a video script off a series I've only put five episodes up. Now, I have very strong opinions about it. And, and specific make, details. And I'm going to make a YouTube video about it. Maybe you should just stress test some of the script by watching... Like a whole other season. No, this is good that we're doing this now, for sure. Oh, yeah, you guys are... I'm actually t- stressed this to get right now. You guys are fixing a lot of holes in my argument. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, RM in the chat room says, That scene was dumb because of the tone and... Who's going to come out the- Who's gonna come out with it quicker? Uh, is George R.R. R. Martin going to come out with the next book? Or is Maddox going to come out with the Game of Thrones video first? Sound off in the chat room. Okay, well, we'll we'll get back to the... Okay, those are dings in my uh, favor. If you guys agree with me, ding. <laughs> uh, yeah, Taylor Nikolai says, can't wait to see new Maddox video about Game of Thrones a few years after Game of Thrones ends. 
Yeah, it just ended. So I got a few time. I got a little bit of time. All right. <laughs> you I got will a couple- like still beat George R. R. Martin. Yeah, yeah you probably will. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, man. And these fucking fans, because guess what's going to come next is the George R. R. Martin ending version of endings. Right. And HBO's going to be like, well, here's another fucking take on this. Well, some people are so mad at him for not coming out with the books, but it's also right. just like, you know, I don't know, man. He's ta- like, it's taken forever for him to do every book. But so he, like, like, look at the world he's creating. It's just one guy creating this massive fucking world. Yeah. And I mean, if you go to back, I mean, I listen to all the books and I mean, it, I listened to, I drove cross country back and forth and I still didn't get through one of the books. I mean, right. it is a right. massive, massive tomb. And like. He writes it, and some of the books you're like, "This is fucking bad shit." He just goes off down these roads, and you're like, "What happened to the characters?" I gave a shit about, and he's tossing in more shit, and I fucking love every single second <laughs> of it. I love like how unwieldy the whole thing is. So I mean, I, my only thing is, is like, dude, I just just try and finish it before you die. Just try. But it They're doesn't like, matter. Very table. If he was like, well, if he does one every so many years, and he's this age, and I mean, if he he's, was the type of guy who like BMI and- was fucking p- doing push-ups and going on hikes all the time. But we've right. seen what that guy looks like. I mean, come on. How many more years can that body hold up? Right. The only other thing he seems to care about is fantasy football. Like, these are men that die young. And he's yeah. long exceeded They're not his expectancy. Built long for this world. No, no. So he cares about fantasy dragons and fantasy football. It sounds, sounds about right. Like, yeah. this fucking... And I've heard that people have been to George R. R. Martin's house. And it's just full of shit. It's just oh, it must crammed be. with just, like, knickknacks. Do you know what I, I envision him, like, eating for for breakfast is what I always want to do, which is cheese puffs, uh, a, a plastic <laughs> a milk. barrel of cheese puffs. The round, filled, perfectly round. Yeah, puffs. filled uh. with vitamin D milk. And, <laughs> and he just has one of those for breakfast every morning. Didn't, uh, didn't our guest... That's, uh, that's called the fuck you God breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> guest last uh, last episode, Bradley Laberman, didn't he say he's actually done that? Yeah, yeah, he did, he did. Yeah, he's <gasps> eating cheese puffs with, uh, with milk. Oh my God, I want to barf. Oh, the, <laughs> the balls. <laughs> you know what, though? Okay, let's, I love let's, it. Let's remove this concept that we are associating of cereal with milk and just instead say, okay, Indian food uses heavy cream and milk a lot of times as a base for the sauce, and they add curry powder to it. Okay, so if you think of it as kind of like a savory dish, and again, I'm feeling the vomit in my throat right now, so <laughs> I don't blame you if you are too, but if you think of it as a savory dish with like a bunch of milk, a bunch of cheese puffs, <sighs> I mean, I could take a bite of it and see how it tastes. I, that's all I'm saying. I want to do it. I'd go down <laughs> that road once. Should yeah. we do it? Should we do it next podcast episode? Let's do it next podcast. All right, Kirk, you in? Oh, cheese puff cereal. Cheese puff cereal. Yeah, sure. All right. I've always wanted to make this happen, so I'm very much down for this. Okay, we're gonna do it on a future episode. Maybe the next episode, we're gonna do the absolutely cheese puff, man cheese puff cereal challenge. Oh, that's our new fucking thing. Okay. Well, I'll do oh, it with hot Cheetos. Also going to be your next tip. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, how man. about this? Oh, do you do hot Cheetos? Uh, do they have flaming? We'll have to see if they have the balls. Because the balls is nice because it makes it like cereal. Hot yeah. Cheetos. It's spherical. That's like a kind of a chicken and egg situation. Like yeah. you look like spicy food. You mm-hmm. like drink the glass of milk to that's get the spice true. to go away. Yeah. And if you just throw them in one bowl together. I won't use vitamin D milk. I'll use like a 2% because I'm, I'm a man and I don't need that shit. But I, I have a prediction. One of two things is going to happen. We're all going to throw up or we're all going to just shit our pants. This is going to be a real Maybe party. a little bit of both. Yeah. A little uh, column A, a little column B. Red Minus in the chat room says, imagine the reaction of George R. R. Martin dies before he can finish the books and someone goes uh-huh. writes an approximate version of his a- intended ending, just like the show. That's You know uh-huh. that's going to happen. Yeah. There's a ton of fanfic out there already. Eve Strange says, so that's going to be one sad mukbang. You know, do you guys know what mukbang is? No, no idea. Uh, yeah. Men don't know this. No, Wim- thank you. Women <laughs> women know this and love it. Okay. First of all, it's neither of those things. It's not muk and it's not bang. It's neither of those things. Okay. It's just um, girls making like crock pot dishes and a bunch of like different types of food. A lot. Of, right. Am I, I think I'm getting it right. Uh, even in the chat room or any other ladies in the chat room who knows what the fuck you're this is. You're asking a bunch of people that don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Taylor, Taylor Nikolai says, Ron, Ron is such a sexy man. I only read fanfic about Ron. Wow. Um, all right, guys. Hey, send me that fanfic, bro. We should wrap up this debate, guys. Ron, 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 <laughs> Final. Oh, man. Uh, that Peter Dinklage. Have you guys heard the Peter Dinklage uh, intro for Game of Thrones? Uh, no. It's it is still to this day after I heard it it is what I hear every time I hear the Game of Thrones sound, song because I never heard the original that much until I heard the Peter Dinklage version. <laughs> Listen to this. 
Glitch, Peter Ding, 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 Glitch, Peter Ding. Not nearly as good as Space Pants. Of what? Space Jam? Space Pants. Space Pants. What's Space Pants? It's a song that Peter Dinklage made on an SNL. Um. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, but <laughs> a long time ago, we talked about, Kirk, and this is just for you, um, the Quad City DJs who made the Space Jam yeah, soundtrack. That's right. So many remixes of the Space Jam soundtrack exist online. A ton. You can literally type in any two songs, and there is a Quad City DJs Space Jam mashup of it. I just tried it with Game of Thrones. I've never even heard this, but <gasps> it exists. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> and it's always a very poorly photoshopped. <laughs> it's always a very, very poorly photoshopped Shaq sitting his, in the throat. I mean, you could put in any two songs, and there's a version of Space Jam, yeah. Quad City DJs. And even like esoteric ones of like the Daytona USA. Level two race track, and someone has mixed that with, with Game of Thrones. Listen to this. <laughs> this is like a true. This is a artistry here. It's There's pretty some... good, right? Listen, to this. it's like the perfect mashup of both songs. Fans of fans of Daytona plus fans of Space Jam. This is this is it. This is their mecca. Right here, that perfect intersection. That of the Venn diagram is bigger than you think. <laughs> right, huge. which I think is just like the there's. It's not the the circle that is fans of Space Jam just consumes the entire Venn diagram. Mm-hmm. I think is what I don't yeah. know what's on yeah, either yeah, side. Yeah. You know what I mean? All right, guys, we should wrap up this debate. Um, it's been all over the place, but vote on MadcastMedia.com. And we'll have the results of this debate next week, but we'll get the, to the results of last week's debate, which was. What is the corniest dipshit wish? And before we do that, though, <laughs> we got we got the results, TJ. You would be surprised. You might I missed surprised. this one. Yeah, you might. And Kirk, you too. You might be surprised. But before we do, I want to get to Ron's Babcock tip. Ron, what do you got for us this week? Uh, Babcock tip. Um, you got wallets? No. Yeah, you have something you have. I got a wallet and a fanny thing. pack. Yeah, I, yeah. It was one my of the. Wallet. I mean, you have your like money That's clip. It. Your weird. Yeah, your weird. I, I got like, like three, four cards. clip full of credit cards. Not with a credit card with your own face on it. Carry around in your wallet, which is super useful. Uh, stamps. Oh, <gasps> have a couple of stamps in your wallet. You know why? Because you never need a fucking stamp. You don't need stamps until that one fucking day when you need a goddamn stamp. And it is very useful. And even if you never need a stamp, you will be around somebody who needs a stamp. And 50 cents is a small price to pay to be the hero. Okay, Ron. I, You know what? I was going to say... Maddox acquiescing to the Babcock tip again. <laughs> I was going to say... I mean, Taylor's like, you don't need stamps. And then he says, carry stamps. But you don't... I mean, you, you never think you need stamps. But about once or twice a year, you're like, fuck, I need a stamp. And then you got to go to the post office. Oh, shit, it's not open till 10. It's a whole thing. Just carry around a couple stamps in your wallet. They take up literally no space. I hate stamps. I hate... Of mail. course you do. There's something useful and practical that most people don't think twice about. You have rage for it. Stamps are garbage. I hate them so much. I got a stamps.com account way long ago just so I wouldn't have to get up out of my seat to go do anything. I was just like, I'm going to print my postage. You know, I honestly worry totally... about you. Yeah. Why? <laughs> like, <laughs> because you just said so I don't have to get up out of my seat to do damn anything. <laughs> Maybe you should get some of those ten thousand steps in, man. I got, I got some lazy, I, I got some award-winning laziness stories. Um, <laughs> this is this one, this one is always a, a crowd pleaser. Um, in the annals of laziness, I a long time ago when I still lived in my parents' house, uh, you know, when I was still a troll in my parents' basement, I got a smudge on my monitor a long time ago because I killed a spider or a moth or something and I didn't I like the monitor was off so I didn't notice until I turned it on again that there was a smudge on it it's very brave of you thanks um and I looked at the monitor and I realized there was a smudge on it and every time I was already like comfortable in my seat I got my little you know my soda my cranberry juice is what I used to drink thinking I was healthy I was like oh I'll drink cranberry juice it's good for the kidneys (laughs) extra like six seven hundred calories I was drinking each bottle anyway I'm sitting back and I noticed a smudge I'm like yeah, it's real annoying. I can't see. Uh, so I moved my icons on my desktop around the smudge. 
<laughs> There's a little Maddox tip right <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, yeah, people came by. They're like, hey, that's real smart. All the chicks came by. They're like, wow, you've got a real brain on you. Tell uh, me about the I'm, chicks. I'm <laughs> Be specific. <laughs> Well, you know, they they want to bounce on this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Had more hair on their armpits than on their head. Okay, you know what, Kirk? Inappropriate. All right, let's get to the uh <laughs> let's get to the summary of last week's debate. Last last episode we debated what is the corniest dipshit wish? What do you guys think off the top of your heads? Cuz there's the right answer. Uh, wealth. I wish for more wishes. Wealth and wishes? Okay. Well, we got Coming in dead last, oh, thank God, is skipping lines. Although, the way I phrased it... I mean, I mean, I, I, it's a good wish. No, it's not. It's, it's a, not. It's actually a really good wish. It's a shitty wish. I know, I, I, TJ, it, it sounds bad. It's a simple you, wish. You know, it's a simple, but honestly, it's a practical wish. It's, you never, you just get to skip every line. I mean, the more he talked about it, the more Brad mentioned it, I was like, this is a good wish. I liked it. It is interesting. I uh, I the, today I went and bought a bunch of a uh, kind of like barbecue snacks, beer and stuff. I'm gonna have some people over this weekend, and uh, it's a busy weekend for shopping, right? It wasn't even that busy because I went like midday on Friday before the rush, but there was like two people in front of me with like fairly decent sized carts. Yeah, if you- I could have gotten in front of those fuckers, those idiots. I was oh my god! I would have been so happy. I was waiting on his porch for fifteen minutes because of the guy in line who you said yeah, was true. buying so many different powders. Fucking dumb shit! I went to the grocery store and this guy so many powders. It's just a bunch of fucking powders, like <laughs> loose, loose powder in bags. Los Angeles got to powder up, bro. Yeah, yeah okay. You know? And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this guy and he looks pretty swole, right? And I'm looking at this guy and I'm like, I don't know, I don't care how swole you are, bro. Because whatever the fuck you're buying is an inconvenience. Don't you label shit? And he's just sitting there with like l- bags of loose powder. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit you're buying? Where do you even find this in a grocery store? Where is there loose powder? What is the loose powder aisle? It's not like you I- had to go to the like the produce section to get the bags to go find the loose yeah, powder section. Because it's put nothing. It in there. It's nothing they sell. The closest thing they sell to loose powder is in the bulk food section, which is like milled oats, and it didn't look like milled oats. Finally, the guy, the guy at the front, he's exacerbated. He's like <laughs> flipping through his booklet, and and I blame him just as much as the guy buying the weird shit. And he goes, finally, he goes, "What is this?" And the guy's like, "It's flaxseed, flaxseed, ground flaxseed powder." I'm like, "Why would you fucking buy a handful of ground flaxseed powder, you dipshit? Why don't you just buy a fucking jar of flaxseed, go home, grind it your fucking self, or buy? They sell that shit in jars. Why do you need a little scoop of a spoonful of?" Oh, you want your 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 fucking time is so valuable. You 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 gotta stand in line paying for this loose fucking powder, a handful of it. You fuck. <laughs> Sounds like you could have wished your way to the front of that oh line. Gosh. Yeah. So this came in last. De- uh, dead last. But I don't Jesus. know if that means that people think it's the most practical one because of the way I phrased. The yeah, I was gonna oh. say maybe this is the way you phrased the question. <laughs> I think people So voted. maybe it's number one? Maybe it's number one. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, wait, what's the question again? What's the corniest dipshit okay, wish? So this here, is the least... Let me tell you. So this is the least corniest one. Maybe. Okay, all right. All right. Yeah, so this, okay, yeah, so this is the Nothing least Nothing fucking matters. It's Game of Thrones. Yeah, it's Game of Thrones style. Game of Thrones style. Okay, and then <laughs> third, third place is $1 million. What a dumbass. <laughs> what a dumb... That Was that yours, Ron? You, no, you, no, mine, mine was wasn't. Bradley, yeah. And then... <laughs> then was immortality. That was mine. Okay, mm-hmm. immortality. That's a dumbass wish. Dumbass wish. I. W- w- how fucking dare you? Immortality is a great wish. I want to be you've immortal. You've already got it. You don't have to worry about That's that right. shit. That's so, right. So, uh, you know, don't complain to the rest of us who are both jealous and deathly afraid of this curse that you have upon you. It's great. I thought I essentially said that within a hundred years I'd become a bisexual vampire. Like that's <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. That was pretty funny. But, but the number <laughs> one corniest dipshit wish is world peace. That's right. World peace. Ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum winner. I'm the winner. And Ron, I got a voicemail about that. Oh man, the voicemails are lighting us up. Let's just get right to it this week because we got a t- shit ton of voicemails. Here's one. Here's one uh uh a long time caller hasn't called in for a while, but here he is. Listen to this. Hey, Maddox, it's Corey. I haven't called in like a year and a half. Uh, figured I should lay off calling you gay, you know, because it pretty much goes without saying at this point. But 
Jesus Christ, man. You know, listening to this most recent episode is 100% confirmed. And I'm telling your mom. <laughs> oh, great. Thanks. Ask. He, call, he hasn't called in for a year. Just calls in to remind me I'm gay. Yeah, no specifics. Nope. Just gay. Yeah. God, it's hard to combat that, though. Yeah. yeah you're, what do you yeah. say? What's the counter? Yeah, I don't know. It's like, uh, f- f- fuck you. Like, yeah, yeah. Right. tough. You know what? The right, only right answer is a thank you. I mean, I, uh, to be honest, like just listening to him right now, he does have a point. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> I never think, thought about it like yeah. that. But you know. yeah, well, here's uh, here's what I do say to him. Douchebag of the week. Douchebag of the week. Now, Ron, here's a voicemail about okay. your infinite wish thing. Okay. Yeah, because Ron was shitting on infinite wishes. Listen to this. God Dumb. damn it, Ron. You just, like, literally, it, it took like a couple seconds for you to just prove your own thing. You <laughs> say that world peace is an absolute good. Nothing bad would happen. But then five seconds later, you start talking about having unlimited wishes and it would become boring and you'd go insane. That's the same exact thing as if everything was perfect. If everything's fucking perfect, everybody would go insane by your logic, okay? No, because all- perfect means everything gets fulfilled, okay? Nobody's unhappy, right? Peace. Wait, that's wrong. I give up. No, it's a, no. Just because you have world peace doesn't mean that everything's fucking perfect. It just means nobody's trying to kill each other. That's but not what that means. There's nobody trying to kill me in my own apartment, but it's still not fucking perfect. The opposite of peace is strife. If you have world peace, you have no strife. Strife is what everything you watch. It, there would be no Game of Thrones without strife. What is Game of Thrones with world peace? There's a bunch I of mean, people sitting around agreeing, <laughs> taking turns on the throne. Yeah, you just watch a show and you yeah, go, man, please. I'm fucking glad you that doesn't what? happen anymore. This? Why don't we try world peace for a year and just see what it's like? <laughs> we and already- if it sucks, we can put some bullets through our head. Okay? Yeah, we- let's just, we even try and strife for a while. All I'm saying is, let's see what the other side of the coin yields. Have you ever been in a cul-de-sac in, in middle America? <laughs> that is world peace, and that shit is fucking... Yeah, Vanilla. the fucking street hockey is insane because we don't have to stop it all the time for cars. Right. Yeah, well, okay, fine. You you have better street hockey. Have you even I'll, thought about the street hockey well, with no cars you're argument? Like you're not thinking about the street hockey. Hold on. Street hockey has a lot of checks, right? Body check, full body checks. I mean, and if you play prison rules, yeah. Yeah, and helping <laughs> each other up, but go on. And and you can't have sports because that is strife. St- sports are strife. No, see, you guys are like like looking at world peace. Is this if we if we sign a world peace accord, okay, countries aren't gonna be like, okay, yeah, and no more sports. No, they're just we're not gonna <laughs> right. shoot each other. There are no more winners and losers. There's and, still and, gonna be arguments and fucking boxing and fist fights and all the shit you care about. There just won't be war going on. On. Shitty. Um, I got another voice. <laughs> I got another voicemail from Germany, all the way from Germany. Listen to this. Hello, Maddox. I'm calling in from Germany because I love the show, but I do have a few suggestions to make. Oh, okay. This now, be good. first, in Germany, we have something we call efficiency, because maybe <laughs> you could use it to put out the podcast on a regular basis. Damn. Second. In your last debate, you talk about wanting to use the time you have when you are immortal to read a lot of books. Maybe you could use this time to read some books about science, because in all the debates about science, you don't know anything about the topic at hand. (laughs) Or, as a suggestion, you could invite someone who actually knows his stuff and has a university degree. Anyway, I love the work, um, but maybe make the work a little bit better. Until then, goodbye. You know what? Okay, fuck that you. That was the most polite way I love of basically it. calling you someone who doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Hello, Maddox. I love C show. Uh- <laughs> it's like how they, yeah, exactly. How they teach you to bookend like bad yeah. news with like good yeah. news on either end. Like very love the show. Po- very, like- that was a very polite fuck you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I. Uh- well, I haven't have, even said we have efficiency. Maybe you should use it. <laughs> yeah, in, man, uh, what a quiet burn uh, in Germany. We have a thing. Uh, it's called uh, I, how you say efficiency. Uh, uh, we have books. Uh, maybe <laughs> you should like to read one. Yeah, some uh, science book. Guess what? Here's the thing about me. Here's what's here's what's good about me and this podcast is that I'm a learned man, and I know I've read science books. I've read a shit ton of science books, and I have discipline in every science. You name it: chemistry, biology, physics. Geology, astronomy, 
Cinematography, Cinematography, directing, climatology, you, all this, all the hard sciences. Game I'm, of Thronesology. I'm, I see. Here's the thing: even even as, coming from a place of ignorance, I still sound intelligent, right? Doesn't it sound like I, I made some intelligent points during the Game of Thrones debate, Ron? <laughs> Why would you do this to yourself? You like I Addicts. think I think for you, loud. <laughs> really confident. I think <laughs> you need a degree in Game of Thrones. I think I think loud equals intelligent to you. Like the louder you get, the more intelligent you think you are. He's not wrong. <laughs> no, no counterpoint. Ding here's wins. A, here's a voicemail about. Uh, here's this guy has an awesome wish. I'm changing it up a little bit from fans lighting us up. So I just called about the Bazell, but also I have an awesome wish instead of a shitty wish. I wish this would be a fucking weekly show again instead of this bi-weekly garbage. <laughs> what the hell, man? Anyway, fuck whales. Hey, fuck Wales to you too, but talk about fan entitlement. <laughs> <laughs> this show's only w- once every other week. Garbage. Go back to once every week. Better. Uh, and that goes to the point I was making, which is the fans love the series. They love the shows. They just want, they don't want it to end. If this was, if this was just one season out of like 12 more or five more or whatever, everyone would be like, okay, not our favorite season, but let's see what else is coming. And everyone yeah. would shut up. You know, I think fans, the thing about here's the fans is they don't realize like how hard it is to make anything. Like a TV show, just getting a TV show made, it's not like you just snap your fingers and this thing just happens. Like you have budgets, you have deadlines, you have star schedules that you have to work with. Like sometimes you can only make this version of a thing because that's all you could make because of outside constraints. Sure. Like and you- no one ever thinks about that. Of like, like the actual, like the line producer just sitting down and being like, okay, how the fuck am I going to make this work? You know? Right. Yeah, like any one person or any one major person. You being like, you know what? Every- I don't want to fucking do this anymore because, like, I'm a person and I get to make autonomous decisions you know about my own is? life. For Maddox to get the sound effects board to work every week, that's just a podcast. I was going to say, one four of us sitting here, to, like, you ever get try to get four people to go see a fucking movie together? It's a oh, nightmare. It's about, like food, especially, like making oh, a decision God. about food. Uh, we got a super chat from Apostolos Constantino. Thank you, Apostolos, for five euros. He says, I like the German guy. I'm starting a petition to remake last season of the best debate. Everyone vote. Fans are always right. Good joke. Well, we'll see about that. Uh, we got another voicemail. This guy's calling in to chime in on the cottage cheese debate. Uh, great cottage cheese debate we've had on the show, but listen to this. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to work I'm in the middle of fucking nowhere, but I was just listening to your last podcast. You guys were talking about how gross cottage cheese is. And Maddox, uh, did not agree. No, I, I worked on a dairy farm for like seven years. Uh, and sometimes when you milk cows, there's a thing called mastitis. And what that basically is, is that, you know, that's build up in the nipple of like milk. And you have to pretty much just like massage it out. And it's like a, uh, a weird like demon cottage cheese mix. So, uh, um, Max, if you ever want to ruin cottage cheese for the rest of your fucking life, uh, I, I would be happy to help you out on uh, milking a fucking cow. Uh, because that's just fucking disgusting. Love your show, guys. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah, l- listen, dude. I know, I get that there are different things that are gross that have textures similar to cottage cheese. Like, I've always thought that horse cum probably looks like boba. Like boba. T- <laughs> boba t- You've <laughs> always thought this? <laughs> <laughs> the first time you had boba, you're like... I bet you this is what horse cum is like. <laughs> right. <laughs> Barely one foot in the shop. But for the first time, he was ever like, just horse cum. Look at this horse cum back to I, me. I imagine the, the, <laughs> like they're like giant tadpoles. Like horses, horses, just disgusting animals. Anyway, uh, here's another voicemail. And, uh, yeah, uh, I get it. Just shit on cottage cheese. Sorry that you have fucking uh, uh, diseased titties on those cows. Why don't you fucking <laughs> give them some antibiotics, shithead? Then you won't have to massage fucking cottage cheese out of their tits. <laughs> Your fault, Chad. Yeah, fucking uh, Max, bad. They'll be like, yeah, let's give cows more antibiotics. Yeah, more antibiotics. Apparently, if their fucking tits are falling off. Um, a <laughs> <laughs> couple episodes ago, I talked about why can't they make the best of both worlds, which is a waffle without the shitty holes in it that fucking soak up all the syrup and butter. Why don't, it's, what, it's, it's a pancake with pockets. No, I, all I want is a pancake that has the chewiness in the inside and the crispiness on the outside. Isn't that ju- brilliant? It is brilliant. Listen to this. Maddox, you said about how you want a really, really thin waffle that has like everything all, you know, thinned out. Well, why don't you just eat a fucking Pazelle? They're pretty much the same thing. 
Uh, just put some powdered sugar on there, and it's essentially just a, a small waffle there. Yeah, is that one of those like weird Norwegian a waffles? Pizzelle? Or, a I was pizzelle? thought he was going to say crepe, which is I wouldn't think is what you're looking for. But oh, I was I was uh, I was talking some shit about Swedes last episode, and I got a message from someone. Oh, fucking dude, you got to get on this pizzelle, man. Is what, it, what is it? Does it, it look- looks like a flat pancake uh, with waffles, and there's a pizzelle iron out there. Wait, what? Dude, look at that. That's, oh that's my a God. Thing, oh, I've had those before. Yeah, I have. Had Are they, this kind of son of a bitch? What do you mean you've had one before? <laughs> I've had a pizzelle before. Yeah. What I, it- so I got a I got a message here from Fabian. Fabian says, "Quit talking shit on Sweden. Guess what we have? Great fucking pancakes that never get soggy and always remain crispy. Furthermore, we learn to get out of porn. Excuse me, get out porn from the internet like an adult. Sell iron ore to a Nazi and have a good day." Thank you, Fabian. But here's the thing. I've had Swedish pancakes. They're delicious, but they're more like crepes than they are like waffles. And crepes, you want the crepes thickness, are pretty good. but a little crispiness. On the yes. Can't we just have that? Can we have, can't, can't, and if we can't like breakfast makers, pastry makers be as brilliant as me for one fucking time. And I talked about this design for waffle iron that creates a little trough for the syrup to go through so it evenly uh, irrigates the entire waffle. And people started sending me these uh, these waffle makers that have mazes in them. But I'm like, it's not a maze. It's different. It's got to have an irrigation system. Kind of like the Towers of Babel. Or the Towers of... Um, what's the uh, eighth wonder of the world? It's a good idea. Uh, yeah. Uh, speak- <laughs> speaking of other food inventions... You are so close to knowing what the hell you're talking about. You the, gardens, had, the Gardens of the, Babylon. The Gardens of... The Towers of Babel. Close enough. <laughs> Here's another spill about uh, ranch on pizza. All right. A couple things. First of all, Ron, do you ever want to have, like, the most intense munchies you've ever had where everything tastes delicious, everything is awesome, LSD is the way to go. It'll give you the most fucked up munchies you've ever had. All right. Thank you. Um, Maddox, you're still a douchebag for not liking waffles. Um, and then on to the ranch thing. Ranch is only good on shitty pizza, like Little Caesars pizza. But you put some ranch on it, okay. it's not that bad. Ranch is only good on shitty pizza. I like that. That's all. Fuck a Nazi and eat some waffles. Yeah, fuck a Nazi to you too, but I, I got to call you out on some no, bullshit. No, I mean, I think you might have a point there on shitty pizza. Ranch ranch is not lubrication for shitty pizza to put down your throat. Like, I don't... Every time I put uh, steak sauce on a steak, everyone's like, uh why are you putting steak sauce on a filet mignon, you fuck? Uh. Like, I've had dates be like, I can't believe you're putting steak sauce on that steak. Uh. Man, I feel bad for your dates if they sound like that. <laughs> it seems like tough to make dinner <laughs> conversation. Just going out with a bunch of hags. <laughs> Battle axes. Hey, Maddox, nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh. Hey, Maddox, why are you putting steak sauce? But I, you know what? You know why I fucking put steak sauce? Because I like it. It tastes good, It tastes man. good. And people are like, oh. Uh, I don't need steak sauce if the steak needs it. What What do you mean by need yeah, exactly? I don't do know, you man. Do you think any food like I don't need to eat food that's so bad that I have to mask its flavor? I'm not a fucking dog. I don't need <laughs> <laughs> wrapping up like a yeah. like a flea pill and food or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah like yeah. put like putting a put a bite of like meat and wrapping it in peanut butter, or <laughs> shit, like like swallowing it like a pill. I'm not an animal. That's not how you consume steak. No, I don't like. <laughs> I like steak with steak sauce because the sauce complements the flavor of the steak. It's delicious. Ron's, Ron's. That's, if it was a compliment, it'd be a little much, you know? <laughs> it'd be like me saying, Maddox, you were the smartest person I ever met. It's just a little much. Okay, you know? It's not. It's it's a little underwhelm. A little not too much. Not enough. <laughs> Dominic Joseph in the chat room. Yo, Dominic. Uh, Dominic. Dominic's a, a good guy. He's been helping me out with with a, a ton of like cutting a lot of the trailers and stuff. Thank you, Dominic. He says, don't let the haters get you to you, Maddox. Next time, throw the bottle. They're big dome. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. Uh, Dominic also says, Team A1. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, and Kapura asks, do I still think Fireball is sipping whiskey? You know, no. I haven't had Fireball in a long time. Fireball whiskey. I used to like it a lot when it first hit the scene. Okay, I, yeah. Goes great with apple cider. Does it really? Yeah. I haven't had it with apple cider, but it is a little too sweet. I can't drink sweet shit anymore. Yeah, same. Yeah. I like... Um, I don't want my drinks to be spicy. Oh, I disagree about that. Uh, you do. <laughs> I guess I'm disagreeing that I like it. But anyway, we got uh, one more voicemail. This one's about Yang Gang. I don't know what that is. Oh, hey, Maddox, it's me. I know you don't 
try to go too political, but wouldn't it be funny? Like, I feel like that Andrew Yang guy, Oh yeah. he's like just going, he's trying to make the internet blow up with him in mean form. Or you could talk about farts. I mean, people love farts too. That's the cool thing about your platform. There are no limits. Fuck whales. Yeah, fuck whales to you too. I edited that voicemail down. It was like two minutes long. But um, what is Yang Gang? I keep hearing this. It's what for is- this presidential candidate named Andrew Yang who's trying to propose universal basic income, or as he calls it, the freedom dividend, where he gives every American above the age of 18 $1,000 a month. He also wants to do a VAT, a value added tax that they have over in Europe where they that put would pay a, for the UBI. a tax on a um a tax on goods and services that you consume and then you would actually get that money back in the result of a dividend uh, at the end of the year. A lot of alt right people are, are people who, who are big fans of Trump, are big fans of him, so if he's had to disavow himself from them and he it's pretty funny cuz he's like my name is Andrew Yang. I'm the son of immigrants. I think immigrants are good, and uh, but there's a lot of people who like libertarian type people. I, I no, no, I don't know if the libertarian. No, no, not. Um, there's a lot of people who, uh, you know, he's an economist, so he has some uh, crazy economist based ideas. Some bad are, economists. Well, a lot of people are getting into. We should have this debate at some point about the universal basic income, the Yang Gang shit. Um, and Kirk, I want to have you on. I would love that. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm Maybe down. we'll we'll have Fucking the next. In. Yeah, we'll, we should have the next debate be that because I really want to talk about this because it's an interesting concept, and I'm not sure where I stand on it. That's an authentic position. Like I don't know what my position is. So uh, to be honest, neither do I. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's an interesting debate, and I know the arguments on both sides from the out outset. But uh, there's an argument to be made on both sides, which is why it's an interesting debate. But anyway, guys, we'll save that for another episode. Uh, before we wrap up, TJ, where can people find you? Uh, you know what? These days I'm actually doing... This is like such an unpopular thing. Eh, it's popular enough. But I'm uh, doing a lot of writing on Medium, if anybody's on there, and uh, trying to pimp that stuff out. So follow me at TJ Peters at Medium. At TJ Read Peters stuff. on Medium, yeah. The, and TJ's a very good writer, very funny. You're constantly working. You're doing lots of stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Things, uh, I'm actually... Yeah, I don't know. And when follow you- on uh, Instagram, too, right? You're on... I'm on Instagram. That's, I don't know, some TJ Peters with some underscores. Uh, Twitter at T, not the J, T Peters. And I usually link that. God, you've made everything so unnecessarily complicated. Very (laughs) very complicated. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't get everything first try. As a fucking fan, I deserve... I'm entitled to an easier to remember Instagram handle. There it is. Just gives out web addresses without the URL, just like all the numbers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the IP address. Uh, Kirk Wilcox, where can people find you? Uh, KirkWilcox.com, at Kirk Wilcox on Twitter, Kirk Wilcox on YouTube. And Twitch. You've been Kirk doing Wilcox a lot of- on Twitch, That's yes. That's right. You've been doing a lot oh, of Oh, nice. Yes. Kirk- Did one yesterday. Yeah. Kirk has been streaming. What uh, What were you doing recently? Paper Mario. Paper Mario. Oh, That's right. Fun. Yeah. Fun. Another and entitled fan base that I forgot to bring oh, up. Very entitled. Yeah. yeah. Are you the oh, Mario check, fans yeah. or Nintendo fans? They're just Paper Mario fans. Oh, the new one's not like Thousand Year Door. We want more of those games. Yeah. Mm. He's fucking. You don't let the creators just experiment a little bit. Like, just put out something. If you don't. Oh, no. Although I will say, Sticker Star was total shit, but Color Splash isn't so bad. Well, yeah, you, that's fun. There you have it. Follow Kirk. And Ron, where can people find you? Hey, man, you can follow me at Hey Ron on Instagram and at Ron Babcock on Twitter. And I just want to say, the fans made me. I love you guys. Everything I do is always for you. <laughs> there it is. All right, guys, until next time, I'm Maddox. Thank you, Ron Babcock, Rear Admiral Tangents. Thank you, Maddox. Thank you, Kirk Wilcox, moderator in training. Thank you, TJ Peters. <laughs> Also moderator in training. <laughs> Still love you, Daddix. But most of all, you're welcome. Hey, Maddox. I have a story request uh, for this show. You told a story a while ago about how your friend went to Japan or something, and he ordered some shitty whale steak or something, and then he like went to the airport with the whale steak in his pocket and just greased up his whole jacket. What an idiot. But that's a great story. You should uh you should tell that story about your idiot friend. Okay. That was a headlight boy, <laughs> long time caller. <laughs> Almost got some of the facts right of that story. Uh, I did talk about um, a, a friend of mine who, it wasn't Japan. He went to Alaska and he was handed some whale meat. And that shit fucking sucks. It's just the greasiest, awful. 
and it's really it's like really red it's like really steaky there's a type there's a type of fish too uh someone went to i think iceland or something recently and they they had some of this fish and it was just like red meat and it's not good it's not good whales just a garbage animal there's no good use of a whale i had a friend uh reading fuck whales today for the first time and she was going through the uh the first chapter and she's like what have uh, what have whales ever done for you? I'm like, well, read the read the book, read the chapter. And the first first line is, there's no animal that's gotten more of a free pass than whales, and that's absolutely true. Think about what has a whale ever done for you? And she goes, lots of things. I'm like, name one. I provide oil for old timey lamps. Oh, really? They provide oil. Cool, Ron. So in order for you to extract value out of a whale, you have to kill it. <laughs> Shitty animal. <laughs> hey there. Don't forget to subscribe to Madcast Shows on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. Okay, bye. Madcast Media Network. <laughs>